appreciate that. And let me remind you, uh, Director Coit, that the experiences that you shared with us 20 years ago with John Chafee, that was my first year. He also came to Oklahoma, if you remember, and, and uh, studied our system. So you're right, he had eyes on all the time. Let, let me, um, uh, Director Boyles, you're, you're the guy that brought up the lesser prairie chicken. You know, we had the conservation, uh, wide conservation plan, five states. Yeah, Oklahoma, my state was one of those states. And we worked hard. We worked uh, for a long period of time. We, we had meetings in all five of the states. And we came up with some, uh, with some uh, conclusions in ter uh, as relates to the lesser prairie chicken. And even though uh, we went to all that work, in fact, we went to so much work that a Texas court came in and said that, w that the Fish and Wildlife was violated because they didn't consider properly the uh, conservation plan that was put forward. So um, right now, we're, we're in, in the process of um, looking at this and seeing what we, we can do it. But there doesn't seem to be any incentives uh, for people to really work with these conservation efforts. I'd like to have you give us your opinion as to the, uh, the, the seriousness of that particular conservation effort and why that they're not incentivized in our system to, uh, to uh, participate. The uh, uh, Senator Imhoff, uh, Senator Barrasso, the, the uh, Lesser prairie chicken, I think, is the classic example of what states can do when they integrate together and work with partners, both in, in the private sector as well as the public sector. It's, it, it's plowing ground to the future, I think, of the way conservation will be done. Uh, $50 million of investment, hundred th hundreds of thousand acres of, of lands enrolled. Uh, and yet there was a finding uh, by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that the species needed to be listed. Mm -hmm. uh, the courts disagreed with that. Um, I would argue that the lack of a, of a formal process for the states to be at the table in uh, the decision process for listing uh, leaves a hole. Uh, and, and really, uh, I think there's a check and balance value in having the state wildlife agency be, being able to be a part of that discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that Director Wiley uh, uh, suggested the same thing. I think that's uh, uh, well taken. Uh, Director Wiley, did you want to comment in terms of uh, some of the ideas you have? I'm, I'm, uh, I was not real clear in your written statement uh, whether or not you were, uh, had some type of a state intervention, a trigger point where states would be involved and take over the function of the federal government. Is, it, is that accurate? Well, in a couple different ways, yes, sir. And I agree fully that we, we states don't have enough of a formal role in the decision-making process. We do get involved early on and, and, and try to collaborate and partner, but then the curtain closes and the way things are constructed, we, we kind of have to sit outside and wait for decisions. The um, We believe one idea is, is right now we have uh, classification where you have threatened species and endangered species. We believe the original intent was for once a species as is no longer warranted for listing as endangered and it's changed to a threatened status that the states should then take the lead in managing that species. Exactly. Now that which reminds me uh, also in Oklahoma of course we have the American burying beetle uh, and it, it fits in the categories that should be. It kind of it, the Fish and Wildlife seems to move the goalposts. They, they come out and say, this is what we want to accomplish. And then once you accomplish that, they move the goalpost. And that's one of the problems that we had. In the case of the, uh, of the American burying beetle, uh, its listing, it was only known to be in eastern Oklahoma and Block Island, Rhode Island. So you're familiar with that uh, also. Now, since the listing, the science has used the, of all these things, the, the, the problems are, have been pretty much resolved. And I think that shows that there have been, since the inception of endangered species, there have been 1,652 listings and only 40 delisted in terms of due to recovery. So to me, it shows that that system is broken. And I think this hearing is really good. There are already some really good recommendations have been made by this committee. So uh, uh, we want to get through all of our questionnaires, but 
I really think, Mr. Chairman, this is this is going to be one of, of the real accomplishments of this coming year. Uh, something we've worked on for a long time since I was there with John Chafee 20 years ago. Thank well, you. Thank you, Senator.